Let's take a look at Thursday. There's only two games on, so you've got to make the most of it. Get the streaming options in. We'll look at it, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I'm here for this week's episode of TikTok Tactics. And I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at LockedOnFantasyBasketball. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account and use the code LOCKEDON. For $20 off your first purchase. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen. Every day we are free. We're available on all platforms. So hit the thumb, hit the bell, hit the subscribe, double bang it. Watch it, listen wherever you can and help support the show. And also make sure you get whatever comes out when it comes out. So only two games on um, Thursday as part of this insane schedule. Week 23 is a little better. Week 24 is absolutely ludicrous in terms of the schedule. In fact... Should I tell you what Week 23 schedule is? I probably should because it is one of the dumbest schedules you will ever see in terms of games played. Just to give you an idea for next week. Monday goes 6, Tuesday 9, Wednesday 9, Thursday 5. Then we go 12 Friday, 4 Saturday, 13 Sunday. And then hitting into Week 24 is where we get crazy. 0 on Monday, 14 on Tuesday, 8 on Wednesday, 5 on Thursday, 15 on Friday, zero on Saturday, and 15 on Sunday. So we've got a 14, a 15, and a 15, and two zeros in week 24. Sick. It's going to be fun as. All right, we are here to talk about those games. Like I said, there are only two of them. The first one. These are the teams we've been talking about all week in week 22. Boston, Atlanta, New Orleans, and Milwaukee. So the teams who play on the low-volume day, and this is the lowest of the low-volume days. Two games here, three games on Saturday. Boston and Atlanta. Um, in Atlanta, Boston go Thursday, Saturday. So do Atlanta. They also play Wednesday, the Hawks, the only team coming in on that back-to-back. And then next week, Boston plays Monday, Wednesday, low-volume days, and then Friday, Sunday, whereas Atlanta goes Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, all low volumes for Atlanta across their next four games. And of course, Boston's so far ahead of everybody else, we're going to have a foolish injury report. And we do have a foolish injury report. We have Drew Holiday questionable, Al Horford questionable. Derek White, who missed the last game, he is back. This is not a back-to-back for Boston. So, is Horford... Look, Drew being questionable is a positive. Horford being questionable is a, like, we are load-managing this one. So, if both Drew and White play, what does that do for Pritchard? How do they use him? If Horford's out, is it Tillman who gets the, the go? I don't know, because Tillman's questionable himself. And Jaden Springer's questionable also. There's a lot of ups and downs here. On Atlanta, Jalen Johnson's out. Trey Young is out. Trey Young is probably not back at the earliest till the end of Week 23, I would guess. I assume that Anyeka Okongwu is out. He's out for Wednesday. We don't have an update on him for um, for Thursday, but I don't think he plays. Kobe Buffkin and AJ Griffin both out as well, same as Muhammad Gay. Uh, the one there that's questionable is DeJounte Murray because um, we don't know whether he's actually going to be available to play on Wednesday. He is questionable with a back issue, lower back soreness. You would think that if he does sit out, DeJounte Murray, if he does sit Wednesday, that he will play Thursday. You would think that if he plays Wednesday, there is a risk of him not playing Thursday, but that doesn't mean that it's um, uh, guaranteed that he's in or guaranteed that he's out, but we do have to pay attention to it. The guy who has been tearing it up for Boston is Peyton Pritchard. A lot of that's been because Drew has been out and then White's been in and out and Brown's been in and out. So obviously he is on our radar. His value could be there. We don't know how much Drew or White are going to play down the stretch, but we also need to see what happens to Pritchard when both of those blokes play, do they ever go to the small lineup with all three of them? Or does he sit like he has for 85% of the season, Pritchard, at like 19 minutes and being useless? He could be useless. That is distinctly possible. But he could be useful also. For the guys getting boosted, well, Sam Hauser keeps getting some sort of a boost. But again, if the only guy that sits out here is Al Horford, you probably get more boost to like a Luke Cornett. This team remains very frustrating. 
And DeAndre Hunter, he is available in quite a few spots, Hunter. You do want to roster him. Of course, you know the problems with him in terms of the value that you get. But in terms of adding guys off the wire for Thursday, don't really think... I don't really think you're going to find anyone that uh, looks significantly better than what DeAndre Hunter brings at the moment. Today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Do you ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Well, our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class-exclusive Google built-in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. Nissan's incredible lineup also includes the 2024 Nissan Armada. It will change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Picture a rugged 4x4 that can seat up to 8 in first-class luxury and style. Tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. So take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go and find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Okay, um, one game down. Second game coming up. Milwaukee taking on the Pelicans in New Orleans. Both of these teams, as we've already talked about, have the Thursday-Saturday schedule. They already had the Tuesday this week. They had the best schedule out of anybody in terms of getting the quality games maximized. Next week, Milwaukee starts off with Tuesday-Wednesday, and then they go into the high-volume Friday-Sunday. And the Pelicans, and those Friday-Sunday are high. That's 12 and 13 games, as we talked about already. The Pelicans go Thursday-Saturday this week, and then they head Monday-Wednesday next week, with the Friday-Sunday being right off. So two quality games for next week for the Pelicans, two for the Bucks, two for the Celtics, four for the Hawks. So if you are tossing up anything between these four teams, Atlanta kills them, dominates them in terms of value. So who's injured? Yanni is probable. Chris Middleton is probable. We guess that they're going to play through a probable tag. Marshawn Beauchamp is probable as well. Pat Beverly is questionable. While for the Pelicans, Brandon Ingram is out. Dyson Daniels is out. And then Jose Alvarado, who seemed to mysteriously leave their game with a hip injury last time out on Tuesday. We got, look, basically no update on that whatsoever about it. But now we do have him popping up on the injury report with a questionable tag saying hip soreness. Now, if he is out, I'm going to expect that we get a lot more Jordan Hawkins. We have to. Not that Jordan Hawkins is a good ball handler, but it'll be a lot of Zion and a lot of CJ running as the point because they don't have anybody else. Like Ingram's not there. Um, you're going to have a lot of... Um, you're going to have to have a lot of Jordan Hawkins in that scenario just to get some guard play, just to get some shooting in there. Um, you just don't have... Like, no Dyson Daniels is the other ball handler I was thinking of that these guys just aren't around. So they don't... like. Can they, are there even two-way guys they can go to? Not really. Like Darius Sebron, not really. Malcolm Hill, absolutely not. So maybe you get a lot of Hawkins in that scenario if Jose is out. What I want to watch for Milwaukee is Brook Lopez because let's be fair, he's not playing very well at all. So we want to watch his playing time. We want to watch his production. We want to see the block numbers, the usage. The minutes, I said this on the waiver wire show earlier today, I don't think you need to hold on to Brook Lopez outside of the schedule benefit. And when you head into next week, when they do have the Tuesday, Wednesday, your quality game back to back, a lot of teams have two um, quality games to start next week. The other thing we need to pay attention to is Larry Nance, because he's getting a lot of minutes, obviously. They're barely playing Valanciunas. It'll be interesting to see whether against a big center like Lopez and obviously Giannis, whether Valanciunas gets a little bit more run. But we want to see what Nance, not only his role, but like, bro, do something. Generate a stat somewhere. The value in having Larry Nance and Najee Marshall and Jose Alvarado is in the three quality games. And the minutes have been strong for Nance. But I see no reason that you'd want to hold him past this week. Guys getting boosted. Leaky Beasley continues to get some solid run. The schedule's really useful for him. If Pat Beverly's out, probably helps him a little bit more as well. Because it means that Glenn Rivers doesn't have a defensive guy that he can lean on in those scenarios. He has to just go with more Beasley. And then for the Pelicans with no Ingram, Najee Marshall does get that boost. He probably doesn't hit 30. We know that Herb and Trey Murphy get the boost there too, but also if Alvarado's out, even though Naj Najee's more of a three, they just don't have other reliable bench players outside of Hawkins that they can yeah, pump a few more minutes into. So maybe we get a little bit more there out of Najee in that scenario. Not anywhere close to a guarantee, but it could be something that we do get. And that's it. There's only two games on. So what about if we're looking amazing? What if we have a 
availability on Friday. There are 12 games on. What if we can do a Thursday, Friday back-to-back stream? Well, bad luck. You can't because there's only two. There's, there's no back-to-back. There's two games Thursday and nobody goes back-to-back Thursday, Friday. Not a single pl- uh, player. Not a single team, actually, more importantly. They don't go back-to-back. So you can't do that. Well, what if you want to benefit and get three games in four nights to end the week? Can't do that either. No team has three games in four nights. What we can do, again, we've got 12 games Friday. We've got 10 games Sunday, harder to stream. Atlanta, Boston, Milwaukee, and New Orleans, the four teams we talked about today, they have two quality games over the next four nights. That is the best you will find. And then on the downside, Detroit, Indiana, Memphis, Phoenix, Portland, and Toronto have one game in the next four nights, Thursday through to Sunday. And only one of those teams, Memphis, plays on the low volume Saturday. So Detroit, Indiana, Memphis, Phoenix, Toronto have one game. It's on a jam-packed day. So if you've got fringe players from those teams then and you wanted to switch them out for a fringe, one of the Atlanta, Boston, Milwaukee Pelicans quartet, well, you get two games versus zero. And while the player on Atlanta, Boston might be bad, Vic Krejci, Bruno Fernando, they might be bad. It's better than having somebody like Chemezi Metu, Aaron Neesmith, um, Royce O'Neal, getting zero sitting on your bench. That's pointless. So that's the sort of situation we can look at. If you look at the next five days, there is an advantage here. There's a plus two advantage over the next five days. There are seven teams that play three games in five nights. Atlanta, Brooklyn, Boston, Charlotte, Chicago, the Pelicans, and the Magic. Always important to look at schedule. Do you use those guys? But the advantage that those seven teams have over your Toronto Raptors is big. The Raptors play one game in five nights. So while we're looking at, oh, look at this value of, say, a cheeky Grady Dick ad, a Javon Freeman Liberty stream, Bruce Brown's immense value, which is not immense, it's terrible. They play one game in five nights. There's no value. I'm going to re-add Barrett and quickly, which I get it. You probably should. I think they do play across the weekend. They play on Sunday, but one game in five nights, Thursday, Friday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, you get one game out of uh, Barrett and quickly. If they even return on Sunday, does that just sink your entire week, your playoffs? I don't know, but that is a question you ask because that is a terrible schedule for the Toronto Raptors. If I look at six days, the next six days or next seven days, there's no real clear advantage. The only difference between the most games and the least games is one, so we don't look, we don't care that much. What we do look at is the next eight days, Thursday through to Thursday next week. Because the Hawks have five games in eight nights, all quality games, all five quality games, versus a plethora. And by plethora, I mean nine, nine teams that play three games in eight nights. Chicago, Detroit, Indiana, Memphis, Phoenix, Portland, San Antonio, Toronto, and Utah. Bad schedules for these guys. DeAndre Hunter, Bruno Fernando, um, maybe Vic Krejci, maybe Trent Forrest. You're gaining extra games from those guys. Look at volume of games. Look at volume of quality games as well. Over the next 10 days, you got the advantage there as well. Now, plus two over 10 days isn't particularly exciting, but it's something because Atlanta has six games, all quality games, over the next 10 days. Chicago, Indiana, Phoenix, Portland, San Antonio, Toronto, and Utah have four games in 10 nights. So... If you're considering a fringy Jarris Walker or a Jalen Smith or a Royce O'Neal, Eric Gordon, Bol Bol, Drew Eubanks, Chris Murray, Jabari Walker, there's not a huge value in four games and 10 nights from those blokes. But I think a lot of it we're going to be looking at is our individual opponents, our categorical matchup needs, and our day-by-day quality game, who's available, what spots do I have there on my roster before we start like just looking at things as a complete bulk sort of view because that will, I think, end up in a lot of cases um, leading you astray. Today's episode is brought to you by the Game Time app. When you are buying tickets to your next big event, you shouldn't have to worry. In fact, why would you want to worry for something that's fun? You want the easiest, most stress-free process, and that is what Game Time can bring you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in pricing, views for your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. You can get those last-minute tickets. You get the flash deals. They chuck them up on your phone, get you a notification, and say, hey, there's something going on tonight. We've got some nice tickets for you. Do you want to get down to the local ballpark and see the regional sports team match up against your arch interstate rivals? Well, you can do that over on the Game Time app. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Create an account, 
No, that's what we need to do. You download the game time app. That's the first step. Then you create the account and use the code locked on for $20 off your purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code L O C K E D O N for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Okay, um, let's just wrap up now in terms of streaming in for Thursday. Be really cautious about looking at the injury reports, who's in, who's out, especially with Atlanta. The big one's going to be a Nyoka Kongwu and DeJounte Murray. I don't think anyone else is going to... Well, actually, uh, the Celtics one with Al Horford uh, and Drew Holiday is going to be some pretty key stuff as well. DeAndre Hunter, if he's somehow available, he is the one we look at for Yahoo points format. I don't think Bruno Fernando's got an opportunity. Obviously, if a Kongwu plays, we're not interested in that. Uh, Larry Nance, Najee Marshall. I haven't included questionable tag guys like Al Horford or Jose Alvarado. They would be on this list. I've uh, got Malik Beasley on there and then Vic Krejci, who is going to get minutes, um, whether he's able to do what he did last time out or what he did for the other 10 starts, I don't know. We want what he did last game, not those uh, first 10 starts. The ESPN point scoring guys, basically the same, or it's literally exactly the same list because there's just so little to choose from. So getting the right guys at this point is really key. For category leagues, if we're streaming in the points category, it has to be DeAndre Hunter. He has to be the best guy that's available for you if he's available. Bruno Fernando, Fernando, Bruno Fernando, not a bad scoring option. Could get you 12 or 13 very easily if yeah, things work right. It is risky. That's a deeper league one. For threes, it's very easily Leaky Beasley. You could look at Slam and Sammy Hauser there as well. Yeah, throw Peyton Pritchard into that mix as well, but he is above my roster percentage when I'm looking at deeper league players there. Four big man numbers, Larry Nance and Bruno Fernando. Uh, Nance probably only got like seven, eight rebound upside, but he feel more secure in his minutes, whereas Fernando can get a double-double, but he also might play five minutes. So that's a risky one. For blocks, Fernando could get you zero, could get you two, but that's how blocks roll. And then I've got Luke Cornette there. That is very risky, but both Tillman and Horford could get rolled out, rolled out, ruled out, and then uh, Cornette could play 25 minutes and have three blocks. Or... They could give Tillman all of the minutes and Horford plays and Cornet gets three minutes and does nothing. Very risky on a day like this. For guards, Pritchard is your assist guy that we're taking a look at here. Has to be, even though Drew and Derek White, if they both play, will have a significant impact on him. And then Vic Krejci, who's going to get the minutes. He might get you four or five. Very low assist upside, though. For steals, Nance and Marshall in New Orleans. That is what Larry Nance does as a big man. He doesn't block shots. He gets steals. And Najee can get you bushels of three or four steals occasionally. And that's really what we're looking for in terms of upside. In terms of percentages, to end this show out, Field goals, Fernando and Nance. That is what they do. Field goal percentage guys. Luke Cornett would also be an option. And then free throws, DeAndre Hunter's clearly the guy there. And then Jordan Hawkins might only play seven minutes, but there is a chance he gets 20. He's a very good free throw shooter. He might only take three of them, but going three of three is just something that's better than going zero of zero from the free throw line. So maybe we look at Jordan Hawkins, but it's a weird day. We know this. We've known that it's a weird week. We know this is a weird schedule. We've known the teams that we t uh, have to target. And if you've got those guys, well, hopefully you can have some success here. If you want to have more success, well, you just got to hit that thumb. You got to ring the bell. You got to leave your comments down below and you've got to make sure you're paying attention to all of the news across the fantasy basketball landscape. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.